If you've chosen a set of enzymes that will satisfy a pathway and you place those genes under the control of a promoter and put them in a cell, there's a very good chance that the product chemical will be formed. However, there are many reasons why you might not observe the product or it will be very low in, in concentration. It could be chemically unstable, the enzymes might not have expressed properly in the cell, they might not really accept the intermediates, they could kill the cell. Beyond all these possibilities is the various forms of regulation that can take place. Consider the example of a three enzyme pathway that will convert chemical A to B to C and on to the product. If this system were to exist in isolation with pure enzymes and pure A, the outcome of the system would be readily predictable. One simply writes out differential equations capturing the rate for each enzyme, then solves it as a system to calculate the rate at which P and all the intermediates will form. From this, the steady state concentration of each intermediate at any time can be known. When it occurs in a cell, we have a much more complex system, and all sorts of things can happen that affect the outcome on the concentrations of the intermediates and in product. To encode this in a cell, we must introduce three enzyme coding genes into the cell along with promoters, ribosome binding sites, and terminators. Suppose we obtain a chunk of DNA from some other bacterium that contain the native promoter and native operon of the three genes and put that into a cell like E. coli. One type of regulation that could affect product formation is transcription control. If your product, or any intermediates in route to the product, has the effect of shutting down transcription from the promoter, then the enzymes will stop being made and poor yield results. The opposite situation could also occur in which the product or an intermediate activates transcription. For example, the genes involved in arabinose catabolism are activated by the first chemical, arabinose. The possibility for transcriptional control can be easily eliminated by replacing the promoter with an unrelated one, such as a constitutive promoter. This breaks the link between the chemicals being generated and the activity of the promoter. Another possibility is translational control. Here the product or intermediates can bind to the mRNAs and alter translation behavior. For example, thiamine pyrophosphate riboswitches are a common natural feature of enzymes related to that cofactor. RNA elements can similarly be eliminated by shuffling the codon usage. For example, there might be a serine codon, AGT, that overlaps a riboswitch, and mutating it to another serine codon, like AGC, could break the RNA element. Doing this for all codons in the gene is guaranteed to eliminate any native RNA structure. Thus, any aspects of translational control can be eliminated by codon shuffling. The most challenging type of regulation is allosteric and inhibition, generally referred to as post-translational control. Here a metabolite binds to an enzyme and alters its reactivity. Many enzymes are product inhibited, such as hexokinase, meaning that accumulation of the product will reduce its function. There are many examples of these post-translational control mechanisms in primary metabolism. Such behavior can only be modified through protein engineering. There's no easy fix here. At any step of control, be it transcriptional, translational, or post-translational, it is possible to remove native regulation or introduce new regulation. Intentionally introducing features such as negative feedback into a design is a very current topic in synthetic biology. It is primarily used to reduce the accumulation of toxic intermediates and optimize the expression level of the enzymes. In summary, metabolic engineering has been around for a long time. It's a two-step process of pathway identification followed by optimization of flux. Usually the targets are secondary metabolites which will, which will fit neatly into distinct categories based on the source chemicals and mechanisms of enzymes involved. Extensive regulation, including allosteric, greatly complicates things, but is a popular focus of synthetic biology research today.